Hi, I'm Doc and I make mouse calls. Ahoy, and welcome to Mouse Calls. I'm Doc and just as house calls are a doctor's visits to one's house, mouse calls are my visits to the mouse. They are Disney trips that I take every once in a while um, just to work on my own mental well-being. They're a chance for me to escape from my stressful day job and make some memories. And uh, these videos are pretty much just meant to capture that and share the pixie dust with you all at home. Today we are coming to you from the beautiful Castaway Key. It is day three on my parents and my Disney Wish cruise. It's the first time my parents have ever been on the Disney Wish, my second time. Uh, we have just an amazing view from our veranda stateroom today. We got to watch the ship approaching the, uh, the port here at Castaway Key. The water here is absolutely gorgeous and the weather is beautiful today. Couldn't ask for anything better. We are hoping to be allowed to disembark very soon and we're going to try the Castaway Key 5K for the first time. So uh, pretty soon we'll be all sweaty and haggard, but it'll be worth it. We'll do some relaxing with a nice cool beverage at Serenity Bay. Excited to take you all along with me, so let's go. We have officially stepped off. We're on Castaway Key. Mom had to run back to the room for a photo ID that it seems like maybe that was not actually required, but they do ask you to bring both your Key to the World card and a valid photo ID when you're getting onto the island, so I guess better safe than sorry. Um, but right now we are headed towards the bike rental shop so that we can <coughs> register or, or sign up or what have you for the 5k. We need to get mom a phone case that has, uh, you know, something to hold cards. There is a tram that you can take to get to the beaches more quickly, but it's a really gorgeous walk. The water here, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's crystal clear, kind of, you know, aquamarine color, just beautiful. We've got a gentle breeze, which is very welcome. So we made it to the start of the 5k that is uh, over here by the bike rental stand and Ella, one of the cast members from the entertainment team, um, told us the route. She explained where we go. There is a little bit of like a doubling back situation, but it should be a nice little uh, jaunt. So off we go. Splash pad off opportunity. <laughs>
essentially we're walking from the bike rental area out to the airstrip down to like the beginning of the adults only beach no no wait. in between there there's a loop so we get out to the airstrip we do a little loop through the brush down to the adults only beach back do the loop again and then make it back to the bike rental shop made it to this lookout tower. It's not technically part of the 5K, but we're here, so why not? Oh, this is fun. They have this here so you can decode. So it says, welcome to, and then cast away key on this side. That's neat. a nice breezy interlude and now we will finish the loop get back out to the airstrip make our way towards the beach and then do it all again the other direction But we got our major award. And now we're gonna check out the merchandise shops before they're too picked over. Um, just because if you wait too long, you risk missing out like on a size you might want. So we're gonna check out this one down here, which I think is, uh, she sells seashells and everything else. And then we'll circle back to buy the seashore. Then I think our next stop is going to be Serenity Bay, the adult beach. Ooh, there's a selection of beach towels. I might be interested. That is pretty. I got these inflatable ears. These are super cute and a nice little castaway key souvenir. All right, we have boarded the tram to Serenity Bay. Here we are.
right here on the beach we have the Castaway Air Bar, which is our first order of business. Right. Mission accomplished. This is uh, one of the two souvenir mugs available on the island. The other one is the coconut that Dad has. Um, but this has the conch cooler in it. It's a tasty, tropical, frozen drink. And yes, it is sweet, but it really does taste like rum. So <laughs> um, it's very, it's, it's perfect for this hot, um, you know, tropical vacation day. I really actually wish I could figure out how to make these at home. It's just a really tasty drink. Serenity Bay Barbecue is about to open up for lunch, and since we just had tropical drinks for breakfast, lunch sounds pretty good. It's mostly the same food as any of the other uh, lunch locations on the island. There are a couple different options since we're at the um, adults only section. I am very pleased that we have the banana soft serve. That one was out of order last time I was here. So, very glad it's working now. All right, so I got some salmon, some chicken. That's Cajun spiced rotisserie chicken. And you know, some like classic kind of barbecue style sides, macaroni salad, potato and egg salad, coleslaw. Not bad. At least it doesn't look bad. I guess we'll find out. Oh, that was actually pretty good. The thing with the food on Castaway Key is there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's like if you find decent catered, you know, sort of a barbecue slash cookout type food acceptable, you won't be disappointed. It's fine. Of course, now my question is, do I actually have room for that banana soft serve? <laughs> yeah, I decided I had room for banana soft serve after all. I would have shown you the original cone, but I had to do some urgent maintenance around the edges here. This is actually chocolate on the bottom and then banana on top. Since you can't swirl the chocolate and the banana together, they're different machines. Okay, now I'm making it down to the chocolate, and I've got to say, banana and chocolate seems to be a pretty winning combo. Plus, this is actually like genuinely good soft serve. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I've had soft serve ice cream, but this seems to be above average. Some ominous clouds have gathered, and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit, but we're gonna see if we can still rent a bike, and then we'll drop it off back at the beginning of the 5K. And then we'll be back in the area where hopefully, once this kind of threatening weather passes, we can still snorkel. <laughs> to get out of the way? No, no, to oh. Oh. get off this. All right, there's no way I can safely film and bike at the same time. <laughs> I, I don't have a GoPro, so this is uh, this is where I leave you, I guess. And then um, <laughs> I'll see you once we've returned the bikes. Oh, it's a shame I don't have a GoPro because that was a delightful ride. I actually, uh, we actually took a path that wasn't part of the 5K. Um, route. So there's actually a dedicated hiking and biking path that goes a lot further out. And this is like 
a totally different part of the island. I've never been back here before. This is neat. And it is raining, but um, it's not terrible. It's actually not bad weather for biking. It was pretty hot <laughs> earlier when the sun was out. Uh, so yeah, totally pleasant actually. And hopefully the rain will continue to move on through. We passed by some of the coveted Castaway Key cabanas also on the way here. I've always kind of wondered where those were. Well, that worked out perfectly. The sun is back, we finished our bike ride, and it's good snorkeling weather now. The dedicated snorkeling area is over here, kind of to the side of the family beach, which has just a great view of the ship. Flippers and Floats is where we will pick up our snorkeling gear. We already paid for it. Um, we got kind of a package deal with the bikes, the snorkeling equipment, and floats slash inner tubes, which uh, remains to be seen whether we'll use those or not, but we'll see. Well, I would call that a successful snorkeling trip. Although I have no idea how my footage turned out. I hope it wasn't all blurry. Uh, it's difficult, the, the waterproof phone case thing. But it is a really neat little snorkeling route. They have a lot of artificial reefs set up and fish have colonized them. They're very friendly in general, the fish. And there are a couple little Disney Easter eggs out there too, like the Prince Eric statue and the like the Mickey figurehead and the Dumbo ride vehicle. It's set up so that different um, like levels of ability can still see a variety of things too, so that's nice. 
And now we, we're seeing some more ominous clouds kind of approaching once again. Um, but I think we have time for one last drink on Castaway Key. We're headed to the Conked Out Bar. I just got a uh, rum and diet coke. I don't want to I'm promise. too cold now that I'm all wet to get another uh, conch cooler. But this is nice and simple and still tropical and fun. <laughs> Cheers. There's a long time thinking about this. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. We got some drinks for the road. And we're gonna head back to the ship now and do a little luxuriating in the rainforest room. After a really, really lovely day at Castaway Key. I think we got a good sampler, kind of, of what the island has to offer. And next time, we'll be able to just kind of uh, relax and do whatever we want. <laughs> we got kind of the main FOMO things out of the way. We're stopping for a selfie in front of the iconic Mount Rustmore. <laughs> <laughs> Got a pretty great view of the ship on the way back. Since we're already all wet, we decided to come do the aqua mouse before um, unwinding a little bit in the rainforest room. And I don't think I can film on the ride, so see you after. That was fun. I, um, I've only ever had the alpine scene on Aqua Mouse, but this time we got the underwater scene, which was different. Uh, it is a very short water slide, honestly. By far, <laughs> most of it is the lift with the little show. Um, but it was really cool to get to slide down and see views of Castaway Key in the clear section. And now we are at the adults only area. We're gonna check out the hot tub because the hot tub happens to have a beautiful view of Castaway Key right now. We did ultimately migrate to the much more tranquil and much less crowded hot tubs at the rainforest room. And then after that, we went to one of the game show style activities called Majority Minds, where you try to guess the most popular answer in the room to various questions. And we failed that hard. So we headed back to the stateroom to get ready for pirate night. And we were happy to see that now on the wish they are handing out the pirate bandanas. So that was nice. Serious? Arrgh. Arrgh. <laughs> We be taking pirate night very seriously in these parts. <laughs> Arg. Arg. Dressed in our finest pirate garb we are and ready to take on the high seas. By which I mean the keg and compass yeah. lounge for some snacks. I've also got a bag of uh, pirate pieces of eight for uh, some pixie dusting later on. We'll see whom to bestow these upon. On pirate night, all the music that's played shipwide changes from Disney songs to pirate music. It's very fun. Because we had a rum tasting scheduled for later on that would cause us to miss our main dining room dinner, we decided to have dinner at the Keg and Compass. It felt appropriate for pirate night with its nautical theming. The food here is basically pub grub and we did have to pay separately for it since it's not included in the price of the cruise, but it's reasonably priced. We started with this giant pretzel that came with beer cheese and spicy mustard and it was a good, you know, solid, soft pretzel. Um, the beer cheese had a kind of a nice almost jalapeno note to it, but without the heat. 
and then the spicy mustard was good. I, I would have to give it to the mustard just because I'm a big fan of soft pretzels with mustard. But overall, good shareable. We also got these loaded tots, which, um, as you can see, loaded is a bit of a, a generous description. Uh, that said, the toppings that were present were good. I wish there were more of all of them. But at the end of the day, tots are always delicious. So couldn't complain too much. And then for our last shareable, we got the Keg and Compass platter, which was more or less kind of a Nordic-inspired charcuterie board. And um, overall, I was happy with this. It did have a couple of more unique offerings, but in essence, it was a pretty standard charcuterie board experience, which is fine. Well, <laughs> that was a hearty snack me hearties. <laughs> and now we'd best be getting to the rum. <laughs> The chandelier is all pirate themed too. I always have to walk a little bit awkwardly in my pirate garb because my pirate shoes are just a little bit too big for me and I don't want them falling off my feet. Alright, we need pirates in an elevator. <laughs> Our rum tasting took place in Marceline Market and uh, it was about $50 a person. This was an activity that we had to sign up for in advance. For the $50, we got a pour of four different rums as well as some education on the history of rum, how it's made, and different ways it can be enjoyed. Now, I didn't like this tasting as much as the world of gin that we did the next day, so I won't dwell too much on it. Um, I felt like it fell a little short in showcasing the variety of rum that exists. Like, I wish there were at least one white rum or, like, a funky Jamaican rum in the tasting lineup. But it was all top-shelf stuff, nothing under $60 a bottle, so overall it was still not a bad value. We're back in our stateroom now, and we have a neat towel person <laughs> that our stateroom host left for us. The Pirates Rock and Parlay Party is going to start at some point in the near future. Um, this is, at least at the start, it's just like kind of a lot of 80s rock covers played by a pirate band. But then there's like a little bit of story. Captain Jack comes by and I think until that happens we will probably set up shop and play cards on the pool deck. Enjoy the night air. And then there's a dance party. <laughs> Had a really good dance party on the deck. And now, we're playing Pirates of the Caribbean on Funnel Vision. So we're gonna watch that to close out the night. It is our day at sea today, so I'm really thankful to have this on a four-night cruise because it gives us a chance to revisit some of our favorite things that we've already experienced about the ship and to 
kind of check off some more things that we haven't experienced yet. We've already luxuriated the morning away in the rainforest room, so we're feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. We also did check out Marceline Market for breakfast. It was fine. <laughs> no, the breakfast buffet looked like it really had a lot of options. It, it could please a lot of people. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of breakfast because I know we're going to Donald's Cantina later. I went with a little breakfast quiche, which was just okay. It was a little dry and the, there was too much crust to filling ratio for that small and shallow of a quiche. But I also had hash browns and, you know, hash browns are always delicious, so overall, not bad. But I'm sure I did not have the best of the options available. And now it's actually already just after noon, so I think we are going to head up to the pool deck and visit Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods, which I think is really a highlight of the culinary offerings here on the ship. In particular, I love Donald's Cantina, where you can get kind of bespoke Tex-Mex food, tacos, burritos, bowls. I enjoyed a lovely taco bowl my first day on board, and I'm a creature of habit, so that's happening again. Uh, but I think mom and dad are gonna mix it up a little bit. I think mom's feeling some barbecue, so she'll be heading to Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue. In fact, I believe my parents have wandered up onto deck six, so I'm gonna try and collect them now. <laughs> Are up there looking through binoculars. So very nautical. Got a great view of the bridge from up here. I just got a message from my parents through the app that they have actually already made it to Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue, so I'm way behind. Um, so I am headed up to the pool deck now. Here is Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue, and here are mom and dad. You guys haven't gotten food yet? No. no. Okay. All right, well, let's find a, a place to set up shop, I guess. Mom has suggested that we get a beverage from the adults only uh, section, which has a, the Cove Cafe bar. It has uh, one of my favorite cocktails here aboard the Wish, the Pop Spritz. Moana is playing on Funnel Vision. I keep calling it the Cove Cafe Bar. I guess it's just the Cove Bar. The Cove Cafe is where you can get coffee and coffee-based cocktails. We're going to the Cove Bar. There are several pop spritzes available, and these all have like a sparkling component and then a popsicle as the mixer. And I went with the strawberry basil, which is my favorite. It has champagne, vodka, and a strawberry basil popsicle. <laughs> The popsicle is honestly the best part of this cocktail. It is such a good, like, fresh strawberry and strong basil flavor. Very refreshing. And now it's taco bowl time. Alright, I said a lot of sour cream and the cast member at Donald's Cantina understood the assignment. <laughs> Um, I'm so excited about this. And honestly, your barbecue spread, Mom, looks great. You made you made your mac and cheese with pulled pork. Ah, it's yes, and it's very good. Good. <laughs> it's just good. It tastes like fresh, good food. Um, yeah. What can you say? I know this is like a recurring theme in my videos at this point, but it's like hard to go wrong with Mexican food, right? Or Tex-Mex. It's just like a winning formula. And Donald's Cantina provides all you care to enjoy. Now, this comes with the caveat that I have not been on the other ships in the fleet, but my understanding is that the wish really shines with 
the pool deck relative to the other ships. So, again, I have no real point of reference for this, but I would say just the caliber of pool deck food that we have available here supports this assertion. Mom just described Maui as the uh, as a Moana's friend, the big Samoan guy. <laughs> She says she went to school with him in seventh grade. Not The Rock, but a guy who looks like Maui, apparently. The ship turned, so we moved to the port side to uh, play our card game. And then in a little bit, there's actually an adults-only craft session in the Keg and Compass, so we're killing time until that starts. All right, headed to five forward. So this is just a koozie and magic marker situation, but um, it's free. <laughs> I will say they have some unusual Sharpie colors, so I'm intrigued. Alright, this may sound strange, but I, I literally don't have any picture or record at all of my own channel's logo on my phone. So I've tried to recreate it from memory here. I think this is the gist of it. <laughs> and then we have the uh, youtube.com slash at mouse underscore calls. You know, in case anyone sees me drinking something out of this and wants to check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> but it's a nice, I don't know, it's fun. Why not? It's free, right? Draw on a koozie. You might come up with something you want to keep. Alright, now the question is, can I get it on this bamboo? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Now mine is discernible from mom's. <laughs> All right, we've done our customized drink holder craft session, and we've now found yet another venue for playing cards. And we have tried to transport our previous round. Fingers crossed, we're, we're restarting where we left off. headed right downstairs to Nightingale's um, for our World of Gin, which is one of the adults only, obviously, uh, activities that you can book. We enjoyed our rum tasting last night, uh, but I failed to, to shoot much of that, so I'll try to do a better job of coverage on this World of Gin and uh, try to give you a little bit more commentary. Nightingale's is a lounge that's just forward of the grand hall of the ship, and here you can find live piano music and understated theming meant to evoke the song Sing Sweet Nightingale from Cinderella, most notably through this feature, Bubbly Chandelier. Upon entering, each station had kind of the basics laid out for everyone already, um, including pours of each of the gins we would be trying, as well as a couple of different tonic waters, some regular water, and then those delicious little flattened pretzels. Although we only tasted five gins as part of this experience, they did have a number of others out on display. 
and we did get some interesting commentary on some of these other gins. And for the tasting, we started out strong with Hendrix Amazonia, which is not only difficult to find, but it is really quite expensive in the United States. And this was just a, a delicious, very smooth, easy drinking gin with um, some notes of like tropical fruits, which was very unique. Now, I imagine that not every single World of Gin session will have all the same gins available for tasting, so I won't dwell too much on each gin, but I will give you just a, a little bit so you can appreciate kind of the variety that we were able to experience. The next one was Gin Mare, which is a Mediterranean gin with uh, notes of savory botanicals like olives and basil and rosemary and we were actually each given our own rosemary sprig to slap and then um, sort of garnish the gin with and that lent a whole new dimension to the tasting it really accentuated those flavors and enhanced the experience of that particular gin we also ended up mixing the mediterranean tonic water into this mediterranean gin and this was a lower quinine tonic water with some similar botanicals to the gin itself and so it was a very light and refreshing pleasant combo now i'll be honest i have a gap in my notes here and i do not remember which gin we had the little lemon twist added to but just from looking over my footage it seems that this stood in stark contrast to the ones we'd had before to the point that I commented on that to mom and dad. I believe our penultimate gin was Drum Shanbo Irish Gunpowder Gin, another unique offering, this time with notes of green tea. And then our last gin was Monkey 47, which, as we learned, contains 47 different botanicals and is named after the originator's Monkey Max. And this was just a really good, solid, complex yet approachable gin. It was a really strong way to finish off the, the tasting journey that we had been on. Ultimately though, just as much as the gin itself, Bryce from South Africa, the cast member who conducted this experience, was the star of the show. He was very knowledgeable, very personable. He did a good job of mixing historical and technical details with you know, some entertaining anecdotes about the gins as well. He showed us one of the bottles of the most expensive gin in the world, which was very fun. He said it was $721 for a one ounce pour, and he said there are only 34 bottles in the world and the Disney Wish has two of them. Overall, World of Gin was a really great experience and I think a really great value. Um, this, I believe, was $60 a person, which is Pretty comparable to the other liquor tastings in general, but we just got so much for that. Not only did we get the top shelf gins, but we also got such a, an interesting education about each one and these very interesting pairings that accentuated the experience and, you know, kind of inspired us to, to try some things at home. Even if you don't consider yourself a gin person, or if you've been kind of on the fence about like getting into gin, I think this would be an excellent introduction. Not only is it all high quality, but there was a really wide range of flavor profiles on display here. And of course you get the fun educational value too, so I would really highly recommend World of Gin. Well, uh, we all agree that Bryce from South Africa did an excellent job with World of Gin, which is apparently kind of a pilot program here on The Wish. And I really hope they keep it and expand it to the rest of the fleet, because I think it's an excellent addition to the, uh, the various booze tastings that you can do. It's very educational, and we got a really good variety of gins. Nothing was like, oh yeah, I guess it's different, you know. <laughs> um, 
I would say there was more difference between the, the types of gin that we had today than there was between the types of rum that we had yesterday. Um, so, yeah. World of Gin gets our recommendation. Thumbs up. Yeah. You know, I'll be honest. We're probably going to play cards until our next alcoholic <laughs> beverage. So I'll spare you guys another montage. I feel like this shouldn't need to be said, but you know, we're drinking much more than we usually do because we're on vacation. Alcohol is poison and it's bad for you, okay? <laughs> All right, I'll see you at Hook's Barbary next. <laughs> Now, Hook's Barbary is exactly what it sounds like. It is, in fact, a barbary where guys can go get, you know, haircuts and various grooming services. But um, at certain hours of the afternoon and evening, it has this little kind of hidden whiskey slash old-fashioned bar. And there are only, like, a handful of seats, but you can come in and get basically this very tailored, very bespoke experience and get a custom-made old-fashioned for yourself. When we came in, first of all, it smelled amazing, and second of all, Marcelo, the cast member there from Brazil, said that he could provide us the best old-fashioned experience. And boy, he was not kidding. This was frankly awesome. Now, if you're a high roller, they had some very expensive whiskeys. You could get a very expensive old-fashioned if you wanted to, but ultimately the whole experience is what you want. So we told Marcelo basically kind of what we liked, what we were looking to try, what our price range was going to be, and he had a whole discussion with us and, uh, crafted a unique old-fashioned for each of us. And to be honest, I was mostly so absorbed in this whole process that I didn't take a whole lot of detailed notes, but I can tell you basically what was in each of our old-fashions. Mom's was very sort of like down-home vibes. She had Whistle Pig 12-year rye. Hers was smoked and of course, she got the best garnish, which was bacon. And of course, this delicious sounding cocktail was indeed delicious. Mom quite approved of it. Dad's old fashioned went a little farther afield. He actually had a Japanese whiskey, so um, his was made with hibiki. And then Marcelo also used some ginger candy in this and um, hibiscus and then he used orange bitters so sort of a more kind of eastern flavor profile in this one I also tasted it it was also very good and dad really enjoyed it I ended up with what I think was the most expensive and most complex old-fashioned of the three that we tried this was made with Rare Perfection 14-year-old Canadian whiskey, and the additives, if you will, were Marcelo's own proprietary cherry mix, which included such ingredients as black cherry juice, mandarin oil, and anise, and then um, the bitters were just aromatic bitters. Now this was definitely a pricier drink. I would say this is the most expensive drink I've ever had. I think it ran me about 60 bucks, but it was unlike any other cocktail I've ever had. Uh, it was complex, um, spicy, rich, but very smooth. Um, it, it, it tasted like an expensive drink. And the fact that it was custom made for me right before my eyes in this very kind of like intimate setting where we were literally the only guests in this whole section of Hook's Barbary, um, it, it just elevated the whole experience. It felt very upscale without being stuffy. 
It was almost as if we had signed up for this private old-fashioned experience, except we didn't. We just walked in, we sat down, and we, you know, we, we paid for the drinks, and we tipped Marcelo very well because he absolutely earned every penny. This was a real highlight of our experience on the ship. It was something that I had not done, my first sailing on the Wish, and so I'm so glad that we did not miss out. When you're on board the Wish, if alcohol is something that interests you, I highly recommend finding out the hours of this little speakeasy in Hook's Barbary. Make sure you stop by. Not only will you get some fantastic drinks, but you'll get fantastic service with some showmanship and excellent craftsmanship, and you'll forget that you're on a cruise ship with thousands of other people. All right, fully relaxed from our, <laughs> like, bespoke old-fashioned session with Marcelo, we have found these loungers in the shade with a beautiful view of the ocean and nobody else yeah. around. We have, like, the deck to ourselves right now, so we're going to just enjoy this for a minute. And then I think next time I see you, I will be wearing 1920s garb because tonight we have dinner at 1923. And, you know, one must dress up for 1923. I'm kidding, like, you don't have to dress up, but I must. So, I will see you in 20s garb. All right, I have changed into my... 1920s-esque garb. Um, <laughs> it's not like a totally 1920s costume, but it's essence of. I love turbans for um, making a 1920s outfit because they contain all of my hair and they allow just enough to peek out to imply a short 1920s haircut. So... This is my look for both the Bayou and 1923 tonight. And honestly, I hate to do a disservice to the Bayou because I think it's, it's a fabulous bar. It's a great place to get a great drink on the Wish. Um, but the reality is we've had so much alcohol today that I think we, uh, what we're probably going to do is get a drink right before dinner and just bring it into 1923 with us to kind of nurse throughout dinner. Um, you know, just to appropriately pace ourselves. So, um, we'll head down there soon. We're almost ready. And uh, we'll pick up some drinks and I will tell you about them. But we just won't be, like, having a dedicated sit-down drinking at the Bayou time. We'll be bringing our drinks into 1923, the restaurant, with us. Once again, we have an absolutely lovely night out on the sea, out on our veranda. Um, we can kind of almost see the sunset from here. It's, it's a little bit more behind the ship. We can see some cotton candy clouds and such. Um, still a very lovely view. And once again, it's just gorgeous weather. Not too hot right now. Totally peaceful and pleasant sunset time here on the Disney Wish. All right, we are headed to the bayou for some pre-dinner slash during dinner drinks. The nice thing about being on a, a cruise is that you can take the glassware, take the drink anywhere, and they don't really care, so... We can get drinks at the Bayou and take them straight into the dining room at 1923, and that's fine. Yeah. How are you so confident? We're approaching the Bayou, and they have some live music going. That's a fun surprise.
The cocktail menu at the Bayou is very deeply New Orleans inspired and it includes some cocktails that originated in New Orleans and are very strongly associated with New Orleans, such as uh, we got a Sazerac, which is a type of whiskey cocktail made with Sazerac rye, Peychaud's bitters, and um, a rinse of Pernod absinthe. This is a very solid Sazerac. It's exactly the way a Sazerac is supposed to be made. Um, we also tried the Orleans Crusta, which has Hennessy Cognac, um, Grand Marnier, Luxardo Maraschino liqueur, and Angostura bitters. Also delicious. And um, Mom had this absinthe frappe, which was made with Pernod absinthe, anisette, and Abita vanilla cream soda. And she really, really loved this. Overall, the drinks in the bayou are just on a whole other level than, say, its neighbor, the Hyperspace Lounge. I kind of wish we had carved out a little more time to enjoy the space and the music, but it was basically time to go to dinner. That was some delightful live music. And now we're taking our drinks, our mostly full drinks, to 1923. And we are on the Walt Disney side this time. Last time I was on the Roy Disney side, but my understanding is they're, you know, essentially equivalent. Still, it'll be nice to see a different side of the restaurant. 1923 is named after the year that the Walt Disney Company was founded, and throughout the restaurant you'll see lots of tributes to its history, particularly films, um, lots of sketches, models, concept art, frames from some of the animated films. It's all very kind of understated and classy. And we were sat right beneath Cindy herself here. The bread service at 1923 features a fig and olive bread with a honey butter spread. I can't say I've been blown away by any of the bread services at the main dining rooms, but it, this was good and not disappointing. The food at 1923 is widely regarded as the best of the main dining rooms, and I've got to say, in my experience, I am on board with that opinion, at least for the left half of this menu. I admit I'm not really a steak person, so I did not try the famous peppered filet mignon, but I've heard good things about that. I started off with the Hyperion Four Cheese Tricolor Tortelloni which had Meyer lemon, artichoke, sun-dried tomato, and baby spinach. I'm a big fan of this. I kind of wish I had been able to just get more of it as my entree. I think I did ask and they actually couldn't do it, but I have heard of other people having such luck at other times. Dad got the spiced ahi tuna appetizer and uh, I believe he and mom enjoyed that. I didn't hear any complaints. Next, I went with the pulled guinea hen corn chowder with Yukon gold potato, cilantro, and smoked bacon. And once again, the soup was very good. Don't sleep on the soup. The Disney Wish, um, I, I believe every soup that we tried, we really enjoyed. This one was a bit heartier than the others. It was just a really nice, warm, savory, kind of comfort food type of dish, and I ate it with gusto. Craving something fresh, I also went for the fennel, bartlett pear, and tatsoi salad with manchego cheese, walnuts, and sherry dressing. And um, this was perhaps nothing to write home about, but it was good and it was what I was looking for. The little bits of manchego cheese provided a nice contrast to the overall sort of light, sweet freshness of the rest of it, so I was quite happy. Now, I'm sorry, but I dropped the ball on entrees because I literally do not even remember what this is. Looking at the menu, it must be the uh, salmon filet, but it looks more boring than that description on the menu, and to be completely honest, I do not remember eating this. As you can see, I did eat it, but it was just um, not memorable at all. So maybe um, even if you're not a steak person, go for the steak. Or honestly, I would be tempted to try one of the vegetarian options next time. We'll just have to see. On the bright side, the Sazerac was still good. 
overall, we enjoyed our time at 1923, and it was a great kind of last dining room of the cruise because there was no show, so we got to relax a bit more. Now, we've probably waited a little bit too long to do this, but um, one thing that I wanted to do before we leave the Disney Wish is to pixie dust some people with these little Lego Disney Wish ships. And I will show you a shot of the completed ship here, but I thought this would be a nice, like, kind of gender neutral uh, pixie dust gift. If you're familiar with the fish extender concept, you know, this is kind of a tradition on Disney cruise ships, but it's become highly organized. Um, but pixie dusting is more random. You know, you just like bring a little treat to give someone to make a stranger's day. So we brought these little ships and uh, we have forgotten to give them out until now. So we're going to see which of our neighbors still have uh, the capacity to receive these. <laughs> All right, our pixie dust presents are officially distributed. I would say that we had a totally successful day at sea. We got some really quality relaxation in, in the rainforest room. We got to do a fun craft. <laughs> craft. Uh, <laughs> We had some really unique and I think valuable experiences with the gin tasting and and honestly the old fashions that Marcelo made us in Hooks Barbary. Uh, I think those were really high quality experiences, both really top notch. That was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed our dinner at 1923. Very full. <laughs> But oh my gosh, I, I wish they could have brought me extra tortelloni because that three cheese tortelloni was so good. And now we have just been taking in, you know, sort of our last experience of the, the night air here at sea. And when I shot this, I thought this was going to be uh, the very end of the video. So I go on and on about my closing thoughts here. Before I show you a little bit of our departure day, though, I wanted to talk a little bit about the bunk bed. Now, this is available in some of the veranda staterooms, and uh, the stateroom attendant actually has to pull it down from the ceiling for you. I did sleep in this for the length of our cruise, but as someone who is about 5'9", I would not do it again. It was borderline long enough for me, but if you are a man... <laughs> Or if you're any taller than I am, it's a definite no-go. Great option for kids, though. And just like that, it's the next day. <laughs> um, this is our debarkation day, obviously. We, um, we failed to get our luggage out by 10.30 last night. Um, you have to leave it outside your room if you want them to take your bags off the ship and leave them for you in the baggage claim. But... We actually kind of liked taking our baggage off by ourselves. I think it was significantly quicker. Um, we also had a little breakfast in 1923 this morning. Um, you know, nothing special, but uh, nice that they give you one last meal in one of the main dining rooms before you leave the ship. So we are now back in the parking deck at the cruise terminal and we're saying goodbye to the Disney Wish and Disney Cruise Line. Until next time, um, I kind of already said some of the things that I thought were the highlight of this cruise. The, uh, <laughs> the tacos in the rainforest room. <laughs> but what about you guys? What are some other <coughs> things that you that stood out to you? I really enjoyed the uh, uh, world of gin or whatever it's Yeah, called. world of gin. Yeah. World of gin and the... Uh, Especially the um, uh, old fashioned, uh, yeah, making the old fashioned. Yeah, that was really special. Anything else to add, Mom? <sighs> yeah, I love the hot tub at the rainforest <laughs> room. Um, Castaway Cave. Castaway Cave. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Castaway Key, the snorkeling, big highlight for me. And the the weather was perfect when we were biking. It wasn't too hot. Snorkeling, we got out while it was still sunny. And um, yeah, Castaway Key, we had a blast. It was great. Alrighty. So, um, that pretty much wraps up this mouse call. Thanks again for watching. You can uh, like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram. And until next time, I have been Doc. And as always, even though I do call myself Doc, nothing presented on this channel should be taken as medical advice, except for this. Wear sunscreen, drink water, don't forget to breathe. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>